Welcome to this PS Touch tutorial video. This time we're going to look at the settings menu and at the manual control menu. The settings menu will allow you, as it says, to set some uh, options and the manual control window allows you to send direct commands to the potentiostat. Again, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Tab 4.7 and I open PS Touch. When you open PS Touch and you have activated the corresponding setting that I will show you in a minute, uh, you will get the did you know information. These are bite-sized pieces of information that allow you to uh, learn in short portions the different features that PS Touch offers. This is useful during your first few sessions with PS Touch. Later, you might not want to see them again, so you check Don't Show again and close them. Uh, now we will go to the Settings menu. Just choose from the menu Settings, and we see that the menu has two big uh, sections. We start with the general settings. The first general setting is the power grid. You can set it to 60 or 50 hertz. Um, the reason for this is that we need a filter to filter out noises that are created by the AC voltage that is coming out of the power grid. So uh, depending on your country, your power grid, uh, the AC voltage that's uh, at, in your power grid has 50 or 60 hertz. And this creates a lot of noise. Uh, with this option, you uh, activate the right filter to filter out this noise. Um, we are, for example, now in the Netherlands, which is part of Europe. And uh, most countries in Europe have a 50 hertz power supply. So we're filtering out 50 hertz now noise here. The next option is the one that you've already seen at the uh, beginning when I opened PS Touch is the show tips on startup. Here you can switch these tips on and off. Uh, like mentioned before, during your first sessions maybe you want to see these tips and learn something about the features and during your next sessions you might not need them anymore. Then we have the option to switch off and on the sounds uh, in PS Touch. At the moment this is only one sound. It's a small beep after a measurement has been finished. This is useful if, for example, you make a longer measurement and you put down your tablet or phone to um, maybe read a paper or do uh, other work. Mm. And after the measurement is finished, you will get a short beep. So you know you have to pick up the tablet or phone and prepare your next measurement. The next option is the allow connected devices to charge uh, via its, batter, uh, its battery via USB. Uh, it's again only for switching on and off. Um, this is important if you connect your device, if you connect your Android device via USB to a potential stand. Um, your Android device needs to be a USB host for this option to work. It's especially important for the uh, standard Amstead series, so for the non-blue series. Uh, it has no battery, so it needs to be powered from your uh, Samsung uh, device or for, from your Android device, in our case the uh, Samsung tablet. Um, so there this option is quite important. Um, Yeah. The next one is the collect anonymous usage data and error reports. Again, switching it off and on. Uh, this option allows us to um, see your error reports or you to send us your error report. Uh, it makes it easier for us to uh, fix uh, bugs. And also we get some uh, information which features are very often used. So also where we should focus our... Um, software development and improvement. So uh, the last option in the general settings section is the plot, plot buffer size. The plot buffer size 
allows you to choose how many points are stored before they are actually plotted. Uh, what does that mean? Or what consequence that, does this have on the measurement? If you choose uh, a small number, every point will be plotted immediately, but the app is busy all the time. So every time the app plots a point, so let's say we put it down to one, uh, every point is plotted and every time the app is busy while plotting, meaning that it might ignore commands you give uh, with tapping. For example, if you go to the full scale zoom while you're um, performing a measurement and every point is plotted, it might be difficult to hit a point where the app is idle. If you go to a higher number, like three, you have more time to uh, press buttons because only every three points the plot will be updated. Uh, it still plots all the three points, but it plots them at the same time. And during the breaks, you can, for example, press the full scale button. Then we have the peripheral section, where you can uh, tell the uh, your Android device if you're using, for example, a stirrer. Um, this is usually a stirrer with a switch box. Or if you're using, for example, a, a multiplexer, these are the two most important peripherals we're using at the moment. So you can uh, switch these uh, on and off, of course, both of them. But for the uh, multiplexer, you also choose how many channels you have. Uh, these two options are also important for the manual control window and um, they are to activate there these devices they need to be activated in the settings so let's look at the manual control window and as mentioned before it is for giving direct commands to the software to the potential stand uh, accordingly you can't enter it without a connected potential stand so today i'm again using for my demonstration an Amstead Blue, which as uh, mentioned before is the uh, bigger brother of the uh, Amstead. Uh, so it has the same specifications but it has additionally uh, it is battery powered and uh, indicated by the illuminated white light when you switch it on and you see a blinking blue light which uh, indicates a ready integrated Bluetooth connection um, that's not yet connected and we see there is an auxiliary port what uh, is at the, with the usual Amstead not available. On the back of the device we can find the MAC number. With the MAC number it's easy to find this device when we connect it with the Android device. Okay, so I'm pressing the connect button and I choose the correct MAC number from the list of devices I was paired with and we're starting connecting and we are connected. We This is indicated by the white connection button and by the status on the bottom left. Also uh, the blue light is now steady so we know we're connected. For this measurement today I'm using a 10 kilo ohm resistor as a test circuit and I'm connecting the Limo plug And now we can go to the manual control window. In the manual control window you can give direct commands to the potential stand like switching the cell on and off and you see if the cell is switched on there's a red light indicating that the cell is on. Then you can choose of course the uh, current ranges that you want to use. Uh, then you can set the potential of the working electrode or you can set the potential of the auxiliary port. Um, the auxiliary port is for example used for connecting peripherals. Then you can under the peripherals um, switch the stirrer on and off when you have uh, a power uh, a switch box for example. Then um, you can uh, set the channel of the multiplexer you want to use right now. This is of course only available if you have switched in the settings the stirrer and the multiplexer on. Okay, so we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor 
and we want to apply one volt so we're expecting 100 microamps so we're choosing the corresponding current range and we're switching on the cell and now we see at the bottom the uh, chosen current range and the measured current as well as the set potential and this already closes our tutorial thanks for watching and uh, please have a look at our other videos to learn more about PS Touch.